Hi, we are, we are back on the You the Future podcast. Today, it's a really special podcast because we're on with one of our dear friends. Uh, here's Parker. Hey, everyone. Super excited to be here today. Um, my name's Parker. I am from uh, the United States uh, here in North Carolina. Um, I am a junior at a university here called NC State uh, studying marketing. And I'm also uh, currently interning at a company called LexisNexis, which is um, globally based in um, the UK in London. Um, I'm super excited uh, just to be here today, talk a little bit about um, just young leadership, uh, young people. I'm, I'm very uh, geared towards like building young leaders in the like 18 to 22 year old range. Um, I'm 20. And so a lot of what I work with every day is the same age uh, group as I'm in. And I'm just excited to share with these guys and just be able to talk more about like, you know, what it looks like to be a leader as a young person. Um, and we're going to have a, a great conversation because there's the cultural difference between, right. you know, where, where you guys are, where I am. And so it, it's, it's definitely going to be a conversation and one I'm excited to have. Right. Great. Okay. So uh, basically you also are on the podcast. Would you like to tell something about that? Yes, absolutely. So um, a few months ago, I started a podcast called, um, called Taking a Breath. It was essentially like a reset for me trying to evaluate what's important. And three things that I really realized that are things that I value are leadership, mentoring, and personal development. And so the podcast has been a specifically uh, a resource geared towards leaders and especially young leaders and so people who are interested in taking action on their goals um, and that was something that I found that I really valued and so something that I put a lot of emphasis in the podcast I put out new episodes every Friday for the past three months and I'm continuing into the school year so I'm super excited to continue sharing that um, and a little bit of kind of our goals uh, today on the podcast as well Amazing, everyone. This is to the audience. Check out his podcast and his Instagram page. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, what is your story for starting the Taking a Breath podcast? Yeah, what is absolutely. your personal story, not the complete business aspect? What is your personal story? What makes you attached to this complete thing? 100%. So um, a few months ago, when I was going to get started with it, um, a mentor of mine was basically saying, um, it, it, there's a lot of value in having conversation with people. And so for me, the podcast or like really personally was just a way to start having conversations with people, to be able to meet new people, to be able to talk to people that I hadn't talked to in a while. And so that's how the platform really got started as I wanted to, on a weekly basis, be able to have conversations and learn from people who I wouldn't ordinarily talk to. For example, you guys, the guys in the UK, all of these different types of people. And so I, in, when I originally started it, I never had this big vision where I would be talking to people worldwide or I'd be talking to people across the country, anything like that. Um, but it really just developed into that. Um, and so, but really at its core, it was a, a, a personal growth tool for me. And the podcast was only a product of my personal development. So uh, the, the primary goal of the podcast is simply a one-on-one -on -one conversation between me and someone I can learn something from. And the podcast is all a byproduct of that because all that the podcast is doing is me sharing that conversation with other people. So what, and, that, and that was something that I knew whether people listen to it or whether they don't listen to it, it doesn't matter because either way, the goal of me learning from it is happening. Wow. Amazing. Great. You know, so... Also, like, we would also love to ask you, like, when I saw the Instagram page of Taking a Breath podcast, it said that, you know, uh, your podcast primarily focuses on leadership, mentorship, and personal growth. So why did you choose these three aspects? Yeah, so, and it's, it's funny that you asked that. So those were when I was evaluating things that, A, I've really prioritized over the last few years. So, um, and I can, I can mention a little bit of kind of my experience with the Impact Leadership Village, which is a, um, a basically a student organization here on campus at NC State that is focused on a, primarily those three things. Um, it is a, a program that I got started in right when I was coming to college and I really invested there. Um, I was the president this past year and got to lead a team. But so those three things were things that we really focused on as a, they, they, we placed a real importance on for young leaders coming out of high school and going into college. Like 
once you hit that kind of 18, 17, 19 range, where you are coming into this transitional phase of life and you have the opportunity to lead, you have the opportunity to mentor other people, which is a, you know, kind of a scary word for literally just having conversations and helping people grow. And then personal development, where we see the maturing, we see the maturity phase. And if you can combine all three of those, leading others, mentoring others, and growing yourself every day, then that's where you're going to see the most growth. And I believe that for my own life. And that was why I wanted to put out a resource that will then help others continue to grow in those areas as well. Amazing. So basically you talked a lot about leadership, right? Like the leadership is your main domain, youth leadership. So what do you think are the qualities of an ideal leader and how important is effective leadership? 100%. So, and I think it's, um, it's different for everybody is one thing I would say. Um, in my opinion, I believe that anyone can be a leader because leadership isn't just one specific type of personality trait. Um, so like if you're extroverted or you're the person in front, to me, that's not like the only person that's the leader. You can also be a leader if you're leading from um, behind the scenes. For example, if there's a big um, event coming up, it's not just the main speaker who's the leader of the thing. You've got the project manager who's leading the project team. You've got the people in the background. I think that if you're willing to excel in anything that you're doing, then you're going to be a leader. For me, some things that are really important for good leaders to have, um, really being um, driven by the goals that they set, so for me, one thing, it's like, if you're setting a goal and then fi figuring out the process to achieve that goal, that's something that's really important to me in terms of like who I'm going to be working with, but then also what drives me as a leader. Um, so really setting the goals and achieving the goals um, and then really working well with people, I think is a, a really strong personality trait of any person and especially leaders, because if you can find a way to connect well with the people that you're working with and you can get them to believe in the goal and work with you toward that vision, if they see the vision, then that's where you're going to see a lot of success. And I actually talked about this on the episode I put out this past week with Jackie Meza. She was talking about how she runs a nonprofit based out of California. And she was talking about how her team was really in on the vision. Their vision was um, about uh, seeing homeless people brought into these houses that their, their vision is like, we're going to build houses and the homeless people are going to be able to stay in these houses until they can get back out on the streets. And it was so cool to hear her talk about with such passion about this vision that they have and how her team has really gotten on board. So that's for me, leadership is about creating a vision and getting people on board with the vision. That's at the core of it. Why is it so important to me? It's important because you know, leaders, I think that if you can excel in whatever you're doing in whatever area you're in, then you're gonna see personal growth and you're gonna see the growth of people around you. Um, if you can take the things you're learning from your mentors and leaders that are teaching you and share them with other people, then that's a really good quality trait of a leader. Um, because for example, if we're talking on this podcast, but then I never share it with anyone or you never share it with anyone, then to some extent, we're kind of being selfish with that information we're learning because we're not sharing. But I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts because, I, and I don't know, um, maybe you guys have a different perception um, or perspective on leadership and would love to hear like for you guys, what are some things you value on, um, on for leaders? Um, like we, what we value in leaders, basically, you know, leadership is not just position, it's action. So that's right. Yeah, we need to get that right. And also, you know, it's not just about and like you bossing other people around there's a difference between bosses and leaders. A leader is the one who takes the whole team forward. It's not just a person like running an organization or anything. It's like a person who does well for the organization is a leader is a leader. Like, and you can be a lead, like anyone can be a leader. It's not like it's a very difficult or you have to take a particular course. It's really simple. You just have to have the passion. Like if like I saw like right now you were speaking so passionately about leadership and everything about your podcast and everything because you have you have the passion you have the 
you have the desire to actually do something and that's why you're leading from the front because you have the passion right the best and the most important thing while being a leader is passion is desire is knowing the outcome and a leader should know the leader should have clarity it's very important you should know your outcome the one thing which separates a good leader from a bad leader is clarity if you don't know your vision if you don't know what you are going to do in next 10 years if you don't know what actually you are going after then you can't lead other people because you all have to share a similar vision right. in order in order for a team to work right? right and the purpose of a leader is to make a team work yeah no 100% i think that is like exactly spot on um and and 100% agree <laughs> But right and I, i would also like to ask you about vision how do you, how important do you think a vision is a vision and a goal yeah 100% so i think that any you can have the best leader you can have the best um team you can have the best product group but if there is no vision like if there is no end goal then you're not going to see success because like you can be taking like all these little steps but if you have no idea where you're going then right it's it's meaningless it's like if you hop in the car and you're starting to take turns you're going left you're going right you're going left and then but you don't know where you're going right like if there's no end destination right then it's 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 meaningless and so um for me that's always been a struggle um because the the thing and especially i mentioned the podcast when i'm talking about this idea because i don't know where the end is for the podcast right it's it's always hard with social media with content like what is my goal really it's so hard cuz you don't want to set the numbers you don't want to say oh well once i get a thousand listeners i'm good or once i get a million listeners i'm good like you never want to set those types of goals because then it either takes too long or it happens too fast or you know you never know um but but that's something that where i'm setting smaller goals i'm setting the goal of all right let's bring a new person on to help with social media let's you know setting those goals as you go um is an important part of a lot of projects so don't think that if you're 18 right now and you're thinking my goal is at 30 to be a millionaire like that's not the type of goal setting i'm talking about i'm talking about i want to set a goal of one small step per day i want to take a goal of um taking one step towards the next thing towards the next thing so um if i'm in school for example like for listeners that are in school i want to get an a on this paper i want to get a good score on this next project like not I want to get an A plus in the class. I want to get the best score in the class even though that is a good long-term goal like it's you have to break it down. So that's the big thing is like if you're goal setting or vision setting make sure to be breaking it down by actionable daily steps. Right. And you know the goal should be process oriented. Like there are two kinds of goals, process oriented and result oriented. And you know uh the result oriented goals are like I want 100,000 followers on my Instagram page. But the process related goals are like i would be commenting on like on instagram for not 20 minutes a day but 30 minutes a day yeah you know when the goals are process oriented then you learn a lot because you know the results are not what you control but the process is what you control so basically your goals have to be like process oriented Yeah. yeah and you know it's really important for you to actually reduce your goals to the ridiculous because it's uh, it's a really good saying that you know reduce it to the ridiculous like i was hearing or i was reading some book and it said that because if you reduce your goals to the ridiculous like uh like imagine you want to like as you said i want to ace this paper like long term goal setting is good but in order to achieve that you have to crush small goals daily Yep. The action inspiration. Yeah, become, exactly. Yeah. Because you get if you think about the long term goal too much, you get overwhelmed. Yeah. You're like, how am I going to get there? And you don't take the action. Like again, the action inspiration, action inspiration. That's what matters. You need to crush daily goals in order to get to the long term goal. Right. One hundred percent. Great, great. So, um, moving on to the next question, how important do you think is mentorship, and who do you consider as your mentor? 100%. So there's a couple things with this. One, um mentorship I think for a lot of young people is a scary word um because it they don't know exactly what it means. 
Um, so just to kind of clarify what I mean by mentoring is someone in your life who you feel like you can talk to and learn from on a somewhat regular basis, right? Someone who is ahead of you in their life or in some area of their life. And it doesn't have to be formally you saying, Hey, will you be my mentor? It can just be, Hey, can we grab a cup of coffee and sit down and talk? And that's it. Right. So that's just to kind of clarify what I mean by a mentor. And, and I clarify that because when, when you say, you know, who's my one mentor, I personally have kind of a lot of mentors or different mentors for different areas of my life. Um, and, and so I say that because, um, mentors in general, right. I might have one mentor for my school, right? Like, um, I'm working on school stuff and I'm asking, you know, a, you know, my college counselor, for example, she will tell me, you know, what classes should I be taking? What should I be, you know, really taking away from the, the right classes? I might have a, an internship mentor, my boss, you know, someone who I'm learning from on a daily basis, right? So that's kind of why I clarify the different areas of my life. I like to really be pulling those um, different ideas. I had a, um, someone on the podcast recently, he talked about the idea of like categorical mentor was what he called that idea where it's kind of like a drawer, like a filing cabinet and you pull out like, oh, you know, a business like, oh, well, let me grab, you know, this mentor and ask questions or like internship, you know, so kind of that idea. Um, and then uh, the other side of it, if people are uncomfortable with that idea of an in-person conversation is I think technology provides us so much opportunity for mentoring because YouTube, because social media, we have opportunities to on a daily basis, be consuming content of people that we will never be able to meet, but right. are our mentors because we can have that connection. So if you're uncomfortable with that face-to-face -face in-person dialogue, start with something as simple as, Hey, like one of the ones I really like is a guy named Ed Milet. Um, he's a entrepreneur, um, uh, comes from the same kind of, um, background as I do in, in, in some ways. And so he, um, is someone that I've consumed a lot of his content and really appreciate a lot of his ideas. And he's someone that I would consider to be a mentor that I will most likely never meet, never interact with face to face. Mm -hmm. Great, great. You know, now we actually got to this topic of social media and personally, I love your utilization of social media. Like you just feel free to DM anyone, just talk to anyone. It's really good. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. It's really, it's really good. So, you know, we basically connected through social media. So yep. how do you think we should utilize social media? <laughs> Yeah, no, 100%. So it, this is funny because last night my roommate, so I just moved into this apartment, which is why I don't have like a good background set up yet. But I, I just moved in here with some people um, that I hadn't met before. And we were sitting around talking last night and they asked me about this. We were talking about social media and something that one of them brought up. I can't take credit for this because it was um, one of my roommates actually, but he said, it's always interesting to see with social media who is following the rules and who is breaking the rules. And what we, what we talked about following that conversation is not like, Oh, like, what are you posting? Or like, are you spamming? Nothing like that. Uh, we were talking about, are you willing to go a different way than normally people would? For example, you mentioned, I reach out over DMS constantly to people I've never talked to before. or Don't follow me. I'm following people who I see they're interacting with my content. I'm reaching out to them directly saying, Hey, saw you interacted with my content, like wanted to hear more about your story, learn more about you. Um, it's those types of things where if you're willing to quote unquote, break the rules where some people wouldn't be comfortable doing that. They wouldn't be comfortable breaking that barrier or doing more than just liking and commenting. But if you're willing to think outside the box and use social media to the full extent of the platform, I don't have to have a phone number or WhatsApp number. I can literally just use DM and I can connect with people that I would normally never be able to connect with. And I think that's an interesting frame sh uh, framework shift because also same thing with new technology as new apps and new social medias are coming out. Like we're constantly having to adapt to new social media. And so I think that if you're willing to, you know, really shift that mindset of like breaking the rules or doing something differently than other people are doing, that's where you're going to see success on social media. Wow. Amazing. You know, that's, that's a really good perspective. And like we basically are all for utilizing social media the same way you do. 
and it's really helpful. So guys, please try that. But also, uh, I would love to ask you that you have interacted with people like from all across the world. Like we are interacting from India right now. You have interacted with people from the UK and many more. So what has been your most memorable experience? Yeah, and, and I think that um, that's hard because I do interact like on a weekly basis. I always hate to like pick and choose between people because um, I honestly am so grateful for you guys, for the guys I've worked with in the UK, Nigeria, you, uh, the Australia. I, I've gotten to uh, other podcasts in India. I've gotten to work with a lot of different countries, a lot of different states, New York, um, Sacramento, Atlanta, like I've just gotten really good experiences. And the one that's probably the most memorable because it was very recent, it was this past week, I got to work with a um, woman in Australia, um, 14 hour time difference. So even more than right the India, um, US, which is nine and a half hours. So it's, you know, 8pm for me 10am for her and we're recording. But it was just a, a really good conversation of cultural difference. Um, they have um, a more similar culture to here in um, the U.S., but it was very interesting because um, her son is approximately my age. So he was 19, I'm 20. And so it was so interesting to hear that perspective. And so I think that conversation was really valuable because most of her listeners are adults. Um, and that most of the conversations I'm doing are with young leaders. And so it was something different. Um, but I really valued, like, I felt like she was really listening to the conversation and engaging with it. And so I really value that when adults are willing to listen to young people and hear perspectives that they might not have heard before. Wow. That's really, like, that's really good. You know, babe, you know, uh, I'd love to say it again, but I love your utilization of social media. It's really good. Like, because you're using it to the maximum, right? You're connecting with people all around the world. You're actually getting the most out of it. Like, you're not even going anywhere. You're just here. There's a yeah. pandemic going on and we are sitting in our rooms <laughs> and we're interacting. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not about, yeah. We always say it's not about resources. It's about resourcefulness. Right. Yeah. You need okay. to utilize the resources that you have to the maximum. You know, and yeah, that's something that we truly believe in. Yeah. And what do you think about, you know, people actually using social media to boost their egos? Like, you know, I have seen personally a lot of people who actually are using social media just to show off whatever they are doing in their life, which is kind of wrong because basically social media, uh, like some people are using social media for the wrong purposes, like boosting their ego and showing off. So what do you have to say about that? I think the number one mistake that people make when they are consuming social media, so me as a user scrolling through social media, is I make the mistake of comparing myself to others. And at the end of the day, if you as a user on social media, right, you, you mentioned like, oh, people are like showing off, like flexing new cars or new, all this money, whatever, whatever it is. If you as a user can get past the idea of, oh, well, I wish I had that car or I wish I had that success, then that's when you're going to start to be able to at least shift away from why is this person flexing their ego? Because to me, at least, because I used to have that same question, a lot of the problem was me saying, oh, I wish I was in his situation. I'm comparing my situation to his situation. And if you, if we can realize that, okay, this is him on his best day. We didn't see the worst days leading up to this or the struggles he's having or the struggles they're having, or, you know, those types of things. And we can realize that, okay, we're literally comparing right now, looking at this person's social media, we're comparing their best possible days, you know, out of this year to I'm sitting here in my bed, like absolutely um, terrified because I've got a test coming up or something like that. And we're, we're really worried. Um, and that, that leads to more self doubt and comparison and self esteem issues. So that would be my biggest encouragement when consuming social media. Amazing. Amazing. Great. So, uh, basically moving on to the next question, I'd like to say that when we start something, we often get, you know, criticized and ridiculed. So basically, how do you think we should handle all of the criticism? All of the okay. criticism. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And it, to me, there's one thing that it really comes down to, and it comes down to, do you believe, do you not, does everyone else, do you believe in what you're doing? Right. And 
it, it, it comes down to that one topic because at the end of the day, if you believe in the product, for example, like I give the example of the leadership podcast, right? Or you guys with, um, with doing mental health, like if you believe in the topic you're talking about or the product you're selling, then at the end of the day, no matter what other people say, because you have such a firm belief in what you're doing, then you're not going to be affected as much by what other people think. Um, and I think there's a balance to that because one side of it is you have to make sure that people want to consume the content or want the product or want the idea. So you have to talk to the people you trust. But at the end of the day, if you don't put as much value in what other people think as what you intuitively know that I'm bringing value to people and I'm helping people through the content, then that's how you're going to see the success. I'm curious what you guys think about that though, from your side, because obviously you started the podcast, you're working on different things. What's your advice to people, you know, uh, to, to people who are being ridiculed for an idea or a thought? You know, so basically what we believe is that when people actually judge you, that is how they see themselves. Mm. Because, you know, it is a big problem that no one can actually see the other person getting up. They always try to pull down because everyone wants to be settled. Everyone wants everyone around them, whether they admit it or not, everyone wants themselves and everyone around them to be like them. Yeah. Which is very wrong. And, you know, basically facing criticism, basically you just have to break the threshold once. And once you do that, there is no criticism because everyone knows what you're doing. Because when, if you don't stand up for yourself, no one else will. Mm. And that is why basically you should start no matter how difficult it is, the first 10 days will be very difficult, but the 11th won't be. Yeah. 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 And you know, like, it's like, it's really interesting to say that, you know, when you're doing good, only five people will support you. But when you're doing bad, almost 20 will show up to like mock you and take you down. You know, That's it right. says a lot about them than you. And like, we should remember that we get only get criticized by those who are doing less than us. Like, because if someone who is doing like better than us, they won't criticize you because yeah. they're obviously they are too busy or they know the struggle that you're going through and they'll be like, okay, I, how can I help this person? You know, when you go through something personally, which is so bad, you try to help the people who are going through the same thing because you have that empathy, right? So you only get criticized by people who are actually doing less than you and you never get criticized by people who are actually doing something because they know how difficult it is. And yeah. And you know, like, Basically, we had a lot of, we faced a lot of criticism and everything, but it's just part of the process. And, you know, we believed that, like, you know, there's this thing between construct, constructive criticism and just plain hate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, constructive criticism, like from a point, like if a friend is telling you, like, he knows you well, he wishes well for you. If he's telling you, like, you should improve on this, that's constructive criticism. But a random person coming up and just saying that you're doing, like, you are not good, you're not good enough. You're not worthy and everything like you just have to mute yourselves and like carry on with your work because I'm because first they criticize you and they want to be like you. So I like yeah, that. so that's just how you deal with it and you just have to accept it and move on with it and keep doing your work. It's like you have to believe in your idea and just keep down, keep your head down and keep working. 100%. Yeah. I, I was talking to someone the other day. She um, is a podcast based out of the UK. I did an episode with her and basically what had happened was she did an episode with someone um and it was it, her her podcast is interesting in that she um talks about you know common everyday issues pop culture a lot of that type of stuff this specific episode was on um christianity versus islam and or not versus but just a conversation about the two essentially and that's all um and uh, i don't want to i don't want to uh, frame her in a bad light it was not a debate or anything like that just a conversation and she had a girl on who was from an Islamic faith background. And um, as I understand it, she told me the story afterwards, um, but it's kind of public knowledge of like, basically they had been a little bit, uh, felt like she had put it in a little bit of a bad light, which essentially, you know, it just the conversation didn't go as well as the guests wanted. So she put the episode out because the guest had said, yeah, that's okay. And then had come back later and said, hey, like you need to take this down. Um, I'm not okay with what was said in this episode or how it made me look. And so she came to me and was like, Hey, like, honestly, I'm thinking about stopping podcasting because this thing happened. Like it's embarrassing all of this. 
And I told her, I, I basically asked exactly what you just said. I said, do you believe, right? Do you genuinely believe that you're helping people with the content that you're creating? And she said, yes, of course, because we all believe in our, in our product and in the content. And I said, why would you stop just because I like, obviously she had to take down that one episode, but I said, just because you had to take down that one episode, why would you limit the value that you can bring to other people just because of this one person saying right. that the content that you created wasn't up to their standard or whatever. I told her, I was like, honestly, what happened was she listened to the episode said, okay, that sounds good. It posted. And then someone else listened to it. One of her friends listened to it or something. And they were like, wow, you, you, that episode made you sound bad or something like that happened to where she then came back and said, you need to take this down. It was because of that same idea. Someone ridiculed her. Someone thought bad about her because of it. And she got embarrassed and wanted that content taken down. And so that's always a frame shift as well of like, if people are, even if it's not people directly ridiculing you, but ridiculing someone and that's making you take it down, don't let that discourage you because you still have a lot of potential, a lot of um, value to give to people. Um, and so that's kind of a story that I use to really prove that point of like, people are going to hate and some people are going to be more affected by it, but don't let it affect you and the content you're putting out. Right. Yeah. And you know, it also happens a lot of times that if someone is actually getting value from you out of 10 people, only two people will reach out to you and tell you that your content is good. That's right. A lot of people actually don't know how to appreciate good stuff. Yeah. They are using your content to 100% potential. They are absorbing every piece of it, but they will never come, but they will never show up and actually tell you that it was great. Right. You know, which is a problem and maybe it will take time because no one else around them is actually, um, what I'd say, no one else around them is appreciating your content that also comes to a part because of why they don't actually show up and tell you about your content. But you know, I things go well with time. For sure. And I think part of it um, right now, especially is that um, for us with creating this long conversation style content is that people attention spans and the, the will to actually put in the work to consume the content content is not as much there. And that's something that's a barrier I've really been overcoming with the personal development type of content, because a lot of people just want content that is specifically like, um, fun, entertaining, and that's it. And then swipe to the next fun, entertaining right. thing. Um, and so that's something that I think we really have to overcome. That's why I tell stories. That's why I give examples of things that I'm doing, because I think that those types of things are really engaging. That's just like personal one-on-one -on -one to you guys, not really as much to the audience of just like, that's a struggle that we have to overcome and our audiences really have to put in the work to get the most out of the content we're putting out. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I read this somewhere, I guess it was Tony Robbins who said that, you know, you need to trade your expectations for appreciation and your whole life will change. Yeah. Wow. So you good. need to actually start appreciating the little things, appreciating the people who do good for you and not expect any more than you're already expecting and you'll look great. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so moving on to the next question, like we often ask this question to almost, almost, everyone. Yeah, almost everyone, like what is your perspective on mental health? Yes, 100%. So, uh, and one thing, uh, you know, we, we got to, the chance to talk about it a little while back of like, for me, mental health, a lot of it revolves around like it, it does look different for everybody based on personality. Um, and so like for me, as someone who's more extroverted, as someone who's more like outgoing, uh, for me, t taking care of my mental health looks like interacting with friends. It looks like going out and being active. It looks like serving people in the community. For someone who's more introverted, self-care might look, uh, self-care and mental, taking care of their mental health might look like taking a day off, enjoying some time alone, reading a book or watching some TV by themselves, hanging out with their closest friends, right? And so I think that it, it's always um, interesting. Uh, and we had a little bit of this conversation last night with my roommates because I was asking them too, their perspective on this. And yeah, it's it, a lot of times it looks differently for different people. But for me, it hasn't been as much about like, okay, who, you know, sitting down with the counselor and talking, though, for a lot of people, that's a very valuable resource. It's more about interacting with the people that are going to give me the energy that are going to make me 
you know, make me feel happy that I'm going to get a lot of value out of. So um, it definitely looks different for everybody. But for me, that's some of the things that I really put emphasis on. Um, and I think this, this um, COVID season has been hard, right, on me because I've had to stay inside. I've had to be by myself. So that took a toll on my mental health. And I had to constantly be doing things like this where I can be face-to-face -face with people. I can have a conversation. And that re-energizes me. Like it is 7 a.m. here right now. I rolled out of bed, took a quick shower, got on the call, right? And this, this one conversation is going to have, give me energy for the whole day. Like I'm going to have a great day because we started real early and my <laughs> mental health right now feels really good because I'm having a great conversation, getting those dopamine levels, getting the endorphin levels flowing bright and early in the morning. Right. Great. You know, like that actually makes a difference. Like, you know, but uh, like we talked in the podcast, a lot of people yep. feel it's really like, a, it's a taboo to talk about mental health and talk about if you're going through something in it and like, we just want to tell our audience and even your audience that if you're going through something like your friends might help you, but don't take their advice, yes. go to a professional. Like, because, what, because what happens is they might give you advice. Like if they've been through the same problem, they might give you some advice, which helped them, but it might not help you. And it yep. may affect you in a very negative way. So we just advise the people to actually consult help if they're going through something. It's okay to not be okay. Please remember that. Yeah. 100%. And, right. and also, I'd like to ask you another question, which is, um, what are your three favorite books? That is a great question. Um, so a lot of, and this is just me personally, a lot of who I am and the way I consume content is not by reading. It is by like audio. Um, and so some, like I, I do listen to audio books and some longer stuff, but a lot of the content that I'm consuming on a daily basis is podcasts, it's Instagram, it's TikTok, It's like those types of, um, content. Um, a couple of books that I've read recently, um, max, max out your life by Ed Milet is a incredible short read. It's super high value. Um, highly recommend it. It's literally like it's free plus shipping. So it's literally like he gives it away for free, um, like eight bucks, uh, US Amazing. dollars. Um, it, incredible value uh, for you guys specifically, I would recommend taking a look. And then any listeners that are hearing that, it's called um, Max Out Your Life by Ed Milet. Um, so plug for him. I love that guy. Um, and then a couple other books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad by um, Robert Kiyosaki Amazing. from the business perspective, right? I know you guys mentioned him. Um, and then there's a book called The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. It's um, something that I've read recently as I'm getting into entrepreneurship um, and thought that it, it definitely has some, it's a longer uh, listen. It was like an eight hour listen, um, but a lot of value. I listen to it like while I'm working out, same as I'm doing podcasts and you might be listening right now in the car or out on a run or, you know, working right. out any of those types of things and just have it on in the background. Um, that's a lot of how I'm consuming my like books or my, you know, that type of content. Oh, also what, what podcasts do you listen to? Like, can you recommend some good podcasts? Yeah, 100%. So with Ed, um, he has a podcast. It goes along with the book actually, which is how I found out about the book called Max Out by Ed Milet. Um, the Gary V audio experience. That's right. a big one that I've been listening to. Um, recently there's been some that I've been listening to a little bit more for fun. Um, I actually got to work with them over the summer. Um, that are some of the ones that I've been on, um, based out of Nigeria, the David Daniel leadership podcast, um, yo-yo's tired, which is based out of the UK pack of alphas is based out of the UK. Um, if only you knew is based out of Australia. So I want to plug a couple of those that I've worked with because they're really, a lot of them are young leaders. They're in the same situations as our listeners are and really good people. So if you're interested in looking for new young leadership podcasts, just rewind back to where I just listed out those and those are really right. good. Um, and then obviously taking a breath podcast. Good just, inside, yeah. Matt. <laughs> this this is sure. going amazing. Yeah. Um, basically you know, I don't, I think we should be continuing this conversation, but because of some time limits, we just have to uh, conclude to the last question of this complete thing, which is what is the one message that you would like to give to the youth? The, if I had just one mess right now, if we're locked in, it is that it is never too early to get started pursuing your goals. And that's from my perspective as a leader in business, doing um, mentoring, all of these different things, no matter where you're at in life, it's not too early to start taking steps towards your goals. It can look like 
goals that you're working on through social media, you're reaching out to the right people, you're making new connections, you're meeting new people. But for me, at the end of the day, one of my biggest things is I want to do something for work, for my life that genuinely makes me feel fulfilled. Like every day I come home, I'm like, wow, like, I, like I love what I'm doing. And right now, everything that I'm involved in is been, is toward that end. And so I think that for young listeners, for middle-aged listeners, no matter where you're at, even if you've already started a career, like start taking steps toward your goals, whatever those look like, um, and take that first step today, 100%. Amazing. Wow. This was really good. It was really great. And uh, I loved it. And like, you know, thank you so much for for having this conversation. We are very grateful that, you know, you joined us today and we are we are very much sure that our that our listeners will like it a lot thank you so much parker for getting on the podcast and you know everyone please check out taking a breath podcast on instagram and on all major podcast platforms it's really good and please check him out on instagram we'll mention the his instagram handle below and, and thank uh, you so much keep following you the future on instagram and we'll see you soon great thank you